I'm now going to show you the complete workflow of how I made this Ferrari 812 super fast. All right, this is the only way you can get good at Blender or get good at anything for that matter. You watch the pros do it. All right, I'm not going to explain every single detail. Okay, because it's two, it's 20 hours of footage. I had to speed it up. I had to shorten it a little bit. I'll show you a time lapse and I'll comment over it, show you what I'm doing. I'm going to pull out a few parts, show you a few tips here and there. Anything you want to see, drop a comment. If it's a good question, if it's a good idea, I'll make a separate video for it. If this is too fast for you and you want to see this in written form, you want to slow it down a little, do it at your own pace. I wrote an entire book, all right? Every single tool that I know, I wrote it in there, okay? Please check it out. It's in the description below. Let's get right into it. First thing I always do, I split the screen in two and I open up a reference image on the side of the image editor. I got these images from Google. Just look up. I know you guys are always asking me how to get reference images. Just look up Ferrari 812 super fast interior. Just download some random images that you like. Open them up. Boom, you're done. We use a plane to just kind of start shaping out this top of this little panel. I don't even know what you call half of these things. All right, we shape it out. We made these little bumps above these uh, AC fans. And then I use the mirror modifier to kind of make it equal on both sides. And then I just use just extrusion, just, you know, moving the vertices around, nothing, nothing crazy here, nothing special, just moving vertices around to try to get this kind of rim uh, of this shape around, uh, around these two AC fans here. Subdivision surface modifier, and I use some loop cuts to make the edges sharper here. So this is just basic stuff. It's not rocket science here. Uh, smooth shading, and I'm going to drop a matte cap on this. And I'm going to also increase all, all these cavity stuff and shading just so it looks a little bit cooler. It makes it a little bit more fun when you're modeling. I extruded out another side here. This is the same stuff. I don't have to show you everything here. Just uh, another part of this where you can see this all one piece. Another part where the steering wheel fits in. Okay. More loop cuts, more uh, subdivision everywhere. Just kind of trying to make it flow a little bit more smoothly. Now we're extruding the parts here for this uh, steering wheel for this dashboard. Okay. We're extruding that part in, making the frame. And now we're going to move back to this AC hole here. And we're going to start making the first AC fan. So we're going to add a circle. We're going to extrude that out to make this first little tube. As you can see, it's a low poly circle, but we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier. Uh, it's because if we have bigger, if we have like less vertices, it's easier to make bigger shapes, right? Like this, you can just extrude like one eighth of this circle and make this bar that connects it to. Now we're going to extrude the other little rim here in the front before this ball comes in. And we're also going to use some more loop cuts to just kind of tighten these edges here, make them a little bit sharper. All right. Loop cuts work really, really well with uh, subdivision surface. We're also going to use some, uh, we're going to increase the mean crease or whatever you call it just to make the edges a little bit sharper like that. And now we're just going to add a mirror modifier to copy all this to the other side, right? We're extrude that inwards and now we're going to add this sphere and we're going to use that to shape this ball that kind of holds the fan. I don't know if you can call it a ball, but you understand what I'm saying. Subdivision surface again. And now we're going to extrude this little bit here. You can see it has these five points, these five little corners. And we're going to add... A uh, pentagon just so we can figure out exactly uh, which uh, which parts of the circle are exactly equally apart so we have five of these points which are equally apart you see what I mean here so the, the pentagon is just a measuring tool now uh, yeah so we're gonna add edge split modifier we're gonna mark these sharp edges here just so uh, the smooth shading doesn't go over these sharp edges make it look a little better extrude this little part out we're gonna add some more subdivision just so we get a bunch of these little squares and we're gonna uh, we're gonna extrude the individual faces out and scale them down as little triangles here uh or so we scale down the faces so they form these little triangles and i'm gonna bevel those just a little bit so when i add smooth shading it's going to look nice and smooth on the individual triangles or pyramids if you will and then uh, if i just mark the right sharp edges it looks really cool and looks pretty realistic so we're just gonna extrude this little front bit which is this kind of little beveled edge that uh, starts kind of uh, going inwards Right, right over here. I'll just extrude inwards and I bevel the edges. That's all it is. And then uh, we can just uh, scale this down a little bit to make it a little bit thicker with proportional editing. Extrude the inner part, and here is where we're going to add the fan. All right. So now we're going to add a new. Uh, we're going to add a cube. Okay. Subdivision surface just to make this little point, this little kind of uh, spike in the middle of the fan. This is I don't know what you call this thing, the middle of the fan. Anyway, uh, subdivision surface, and we're going to add a circle in the base just to kind of, you know, just to make it a little bit more detailed there. And we're going to use a cube to shape the first blade of the fan, all right? Nothing crazy. We're just messing around with basic tools and a cube, right? Subdivision surface, and we're reshaping stuff here just to make it look like a fan. Just basically a cube, which is flattened down to make it thinner and sharper. And then we copy that with the same way we did with the uh, uh, with, uh, five little points around the circle. Just copy it, you have to find the right angle, it's probably like 72 degrees, I don't know, divide 360 by five, and that's how much you rotate it around the x-axis in this case, so the blades are equally far apart. There are five blades that are all exactly equally far apart in the circle. And then we got the first blade. 
And then once again, we're just going to copy this to the other side. We're not going to use a mirror modifier. We're just using 3D cursor mirroring. I have a separate video for how to use some of the tools and th about 3D cursors. Check that out. It's on my channel. You'll find it. There's a bunch of different ways you can use a 3D cursor and it's a very powerful tool. You can, you're going to see me use it all the time. All right. There's many different things you can do with it. Now let's add a plane and let's see what we're going to use this plane for because I forget when I was modeling. We're going to use this plane to shape these hexagonal grills. Okay. We're going to shape a hexagon, make it into one face and add an array modifier. Okay. So we stack these little hexagon, little crystal shapes next to each other. And we're going to add another array modifier. So we kind of tile them, right? As you can see here, we have to adjust the values a little bit just so they're tiled and we can, uh, we can make a nice little pattern of these. And then we just select all the faces and individually insert or inset a face, right? Scale it down a little bit so we can, uh, so we have like this little rim, this little edge, push that down and delete the inner face. So now it's basically just like the little edge of the hexagon, bevel the top. And now we got a nice little hex hexagon grid like this. So I'm going to scale that the right way, put it in place. This place, this part was a little bit funky because you have to have the right size of hexagon. I just kind of said, okay, it looks good enough for now. I think I changed it later, but you get the idea. And we're going to take this little uh, edge loop on top. We're going to uh, extrude it out. So we make it a little bit wider and we're going to use that to make this little, uh, this little uh, strap over the leather that kind of keeps it in place, as you can see here. And uh, we're going to use some more loop cuts to tighten the uh, to tighten the edges. All right, and we're going to make sure it fits to uh, it fits reasonably well. And we're just going to leave that there. And now let's go back to the uh, the steering wheel part, okay? Because well, I decided to redo it because the first time didn't work. So we're basically adding some loop cuts here so we can uh, have more vertices to play around with and make the right shape. This play, this part was really tricky. I'll admit this was really, really tough to make. I really couldn't figure it out. It took me a long time. So I just kind of tried many different things until it kind of worked. As you can see here, we're just kind of shaping the hole as it's kind of the way I think it works, the way I think it's shaped. I don't know if I got it right, but anyway, it looked it turned out pretty good in the end. And then I just added a circle and this is going to be like the middle little screen where you can see like a speedometer or something. Uh, what do you call it? I don't know what the name of that thing is. Extrude it out a little bit. You, you'll see in the reference image somewhere on the side that there's like this circle and inside is a screen and then around that there's some more screens and stuff. Now I'm adding a plane here and this is what I'm going to use to create this kind of cushion on top of the, uh, on top of the steering wheel, on top of the dashboard. I don't know what, what that, how we call half of these things. I think you know what I'm talking about this thing here in the picture. I'm subdividing this just so I have more vertices to play with. And I basically have to get the shape so it kind of fits uh, this hole. So it fits, it fits the edge of this hole and it looks like a smooth transition between two of the shapes, right? Some proportional editing here, then extrude it out, make it a little bit thicker, use some loop cuts to tighten the edges, move some of the edges around. And before you know it, I, I can't tell you anything concrete about this. It just kind of, I just kind of tried using some tools that I know until it eventually worked. I probably did it like 10 times. That's usually how it is with Blender stuff. They just try some stuff until it kind of works. Try it again until you get it right, and that's all it is. If I were to show you every single step, I probably failed, failed this like six times, and I almost gave up, but then I was like, okay, let's try again, and eventually it worked. Anyway, we fit it there, and then we get the right shape. We duplicate it the other side, and then we kind of adjust some of these edges here to make it look right, to make everything fit smoothly. Now let's move to the other side. We extruded the other side here. Uh, so this is where we're going to fit the, the fan all the way on the right side. I also redid this shape later. I'll just kind of show you how this works. Just basically, again, just extruding stuff and using some proportional editing to try to kind of get the shape right. Again, it was tough. It was an ugly shape to make. I don't know how I did it. It just kind of eventually came. To, ended up looking the way I wanted to look. If I'm going to be honest with you, I don't know how I did it. And then uh, we're going to go back to this side again, and this is where I, I tried making the second fan, which actually turned out a lot better. So I copied this one to the other side in the end. I used the hexagon, extruded that out, kind of reshaped it, and then. I added some subdivisions so I could uh, delete some of these faces on the side and then I can connect it back to the to the main shape, to the main kind of the uh, main object that we have here next to the steering wheel. Connect some of those faces. Right now it looks really ugly, but we played with it some more later, so we kind of made it look a little bit smoother. We're moving some of these edges around and then uh, to make this a smooth circle, I, I kind of extruded this all the stuff inwards and then I select everything and using loop tools, I just turn everything into a perfect circle so it looks a little bit smoother. We bevel these sides a little bit to make that tighter. Uh, yeah, more loop cuts to make everything tighter. And then we're going to copy the rim from the other fan and extrude that again over there and then copy the fan there so we can just have the same exact, it's the same thing. So we just have to copy it and snap it there with the 3D cursor. All right. So that's pretty much done for now. And now we're going to add a plane in the dashboard because this is where we're going to add a screen later on, add some loop cuts just so we can reshape this and fit it into the frame. And then again, we're going to try messing with this part. This is again something that I, tried messing with like four times before it eventually kind of worked. Then we're going to use this cube to just kind of roughly get the shape of the steering wheel base. You know, this is also, it was hard to get a good look at this. So I just kind of 
improvise my way through it and try to figure out something that looks all right you know it turned out horrible if you look at it closely but it looks good in the final result and then we're just gonna drop a steering wheel there because we already made it in another video i'm just kidding we're, i'm gonna show you how i made the steering wheel reference image again i just googled ferrari 812 steering wheel downloaded the first picture that i liked put that in the background i have a separate video on how to use reference images in blender and how to place them in the background and all that stuff you'll find it on my channel just look for it i don't have that many videos you'll find it somewhere in there and i'll show you how to use references correctly let's move this aside and let's start making the steering wheel all right first i added a cube or a plane here no a circle and then i use that circle to just kind of shape out this central part where you, if you press it, it it honks right use a circle to shape that and extrude it inwards a little bit and then uh yeah i made the circle in the middle using loop cuts i made all the edges in a perfect circle so i can fit the logo in there i moved some of the parts out to make it a little bit more three-dimensional extruded it backwards i added a subdivision surface modifier to make it smooth Tighten some of these edges, make this hole go inwards a little bit. This is where we're going to fit the logo. So now we finish the hole and we're going to extrude this part from the middle and make it into a shape like a cylinder with some subdivision surface and then that's the right shape for the logo. Now we're using a cube to shape the back part of this, uh, the, the carbon fiber part. This is the hard part uh, of the steering wheel. So we're just kind of using loop cuts and extrusion and uh, we're moving stuff around. We also have a mirror modifier here just to get the rough shape of this, uh, of this uh, carbon fiber part, this central carbon fiber part of the steering wheel. And we're cutting off the edges here because this is a, I need this to be sharp. And that's where we're going to add the, the other part where you actually hold it. We're extruding some stuff here so we can add this little adjustment thing later, right? So you, it's a kind of like a circular shape, almost circular. Shooting that, trying to get the right shape there. And uh, using some loop cuts to tighten some of the edges. We'll get back to that later. But we have to delete this side because this is something else. So we have to figure out a way to be able to cut two holes in here. This was a little bit tricky topologically speaking. So I'm just kind of separated two faces separated two parts, extruded them, turned them into circles, kind of what I ended up doing. Extruded that inwards, and now we have two holes for two buttons. Okay, they're perfectly round because I use the loop cut tool for circular, for making a circle, right? Then we use a large circle, and we extrude it out, and we kind of use that to shape out one side of the handles, or the grip, whatever you want to call that, for the steering wheel, the part that you hold. I just scaled it out from the middle, so it still retains the circular shape. Shoot it out a little bit, add some thickness to it, and uh, add some subdivision surface. And uh, now, it's, again, I'm just playing around with some of the vertices and make it fit a little bit better, adding more vertices so I can get the right details and stuff like that, you know, scale this part inwards because that's thinner. Use some loop cuts to tighten some of the edges here. Then on the side here, we extruded this little part because it's a little bit, it's like a separate piece from the rest of the steering wheel. I had to tighten this part and we had to make a kind of stitch. So I just had some loop cuts and, and kind of push them inwards because uh, with the subdivision surface modifier, it makes it look like there's like a stitch hole in there somewhere. And then I used the cube and I kind of tried to shape this part at the bottom, which is again, it's carbon fiber. So shoot this a little bit, fit it with the image, you know, move some of the vertices around. Subdivision surface, scale it up, make it right width, and then uh, scale this shape uh, part down after we extrude it so it fits. Another mirror modifier, smooth shading, and then we'll just use some more loop cuts to tighten the edges to make it look a little bit more hard, hard surface, maybe, perhaps. And then, uh, yeah, we just extrude uh, these loops inwards so to make them make the edges a little bit smoother and we connect it to the rest of the steering wheel. And we're basically doing the same thing on top here. Right? We're going to use a cube, uh, cut it in half, use a mirror modifier, and we're going to just extrude that until uh, we get this rough shape first. You can see it's kind of like a ridge separating them. First, we shape the upper part, then we extrude the lower part, and then we can kind of make the separation between the wider and the narrower part. Smooth shading, subdivision surface. We're extruding this part inwards or insetting some faces and then extruding them inwards so we can make this little bar up here. I think this is something like the rev counter or something. When you turn on the car, it shows you like this is like a little screen which shows you the, the number of revolutions in the engine. And then we're extruding something else here so we can make a button. And then we're going to copy this one side because we only did it on one side. So we're going to copy to the other side, extrude these faces inside, uh, duplicate and then extrude them to make the actual button. Use some loop cuts to make it a little bit sharper on the edges. And now we just leave that there. Same thing, we copy the circle from the bottom, we extrude it out. This is gonna make the button inside this hole. We do that twice for this button. The second button is a little bit different. So we're gonna extrude it a little bit more, add some loop cut, add some bevels to make it a little bit of a different uh, shape. I don't know what this button actually does, but it has a little ridge, this little circular hole around there. So we're gonna leave that. And then we're gonna use some vertices and just shape out, shape out this button for, uh, what's that, the long lights or something, the, the headlight, I don't know what you call them. And uh, subdivision surface, extrude this inwards a little bit to make it sharper, copy it to the other side, that's it. We're going to use a plane to shape out this little button that we use for switching the, the track mode, race mode, wet mode, I don't know, all this different stuff. And we're going to kind of just uh, 
uh, extrude some edges here, connect stuff, extrude something else to make. It was a really, it's a really weird shape, so I just kind of did it my own way. I don't know how to really describe it to you too well. Um, well again, subdivision surface to make it look more uh, detailed and realistic. Use some more loop cuts to tighten the edges. Then we're going to extrude these sides to make like a little circular shape around it, right? And we're just going to fit it according to the reference image so it kind of it fits in the right place, you know? We're going to parent everything to the middle. So that when we move, select the middle, we can easily control it. We're going to add an empty circle. So we just have to select the circle. If we want to move this stuff around, we can easily rotate it, take it and put it into place. And then we're just going to kind of place it on this base and kind of angle it. So it uh, has the right size and the right angle. We can, if you turn the steering wheel, it's going to look all right. Then we're going to copy this loop cut around here. And we're going to use that to make some of the stitches in the leather. So we're going to convert that to a curve. And then let's move that upwards a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And we're going to add a little cube. We're going to scale it outwards a little bit, make it longer, and then add some bevels. Just to make like one single piece of, of uh, like a string or like one stitch. And we're going to use an array modifier to duplicate this, basically like Tic Tacs. Then we, use, then we use a curve modifier to attach this to the curve, as you can see here. And then uh, if we just have to, we have to set up the curve modifier. And then later, if we just put this down, you can see it, it kind of starts looking like we have stitches there. All right. And we're going to do the same thing on some of the other parts. Now over here, we're shooting some of the holes where we're going to, put in the buttons uh, or the little uh, cylinders like what I'm about to create here for adjusting the AC power or something like that. So we're taking a cylinder or a circle extruding into a cylinder, extruding the individual faces to make the little ridges to make it grippy, scaling them down on two of the axes. So we have the little ridges now and then we can just adjust the, the width, the, the thickness, put it into place and now we make sure it fits so it looks nice and then we just duplicate it to the other hole and we parent that and we're good to go. Now we're going to add another circle here, and this is going to be the base of some more buttons around here. So we make one circle extruded, uh, we, uh, down, we scale down the top, the base in the front, and then we're going to kind of delete some of the faces so we can extrude something else and make another circle here and connect those two. As you can see on the reference image, the, this is kind of the shape we're trying to get. We extrude that, same thing again, we just scale it down a little bit, and we just kind of use some 3D cursor. Uh, we use a 3D cursor to make sure all the vertices connect well. We fill in some faces here. And now we got the shape subdivision surface modifier and then we delete some faces in the front and we extrude this part because this is where we're going to fit the button we want to make sure the edges are nice and sharp there so we scale that down a little bit because the right button is smaller than the left button and again we just create the holes for the buttons there and now we're going to uh, extrude these couple of faces on top there's going to be another one of those little circles that we uh, use for controlling the ac power that's probably for the fan right above this and we're going to extrude some more holes here for some more buttons all right, this is also very messy. And then uh, right now, uh, we're gonna get back to that. But right now we're making the little button that you can turn. Just basically a circle. We're extruding some stuff, scaling some, it's basic, basic tools. Subdivision surface and setting a face. And now we have this nice little button and we're gonna duplicate that to the other side, to the other hole. And we scale it down a little bit and we're good to go. And now we're gonna, again, take the faces from the bottom of the hole we created in the middle, extrude them out and now we have some buttons. And we're gonna add a cube with a subdivision surface modifier. And that's gonna be the little separation little metal piece that separates the two buttons that's it we're going to adjust this hole a little bit more and we're going to extrude another uh, hole here and this is where we're, where we're actually going to fit that little cylinder for the ac all right so we're going to copy that snap it over here with the 3d cursor and now it's kind of in place so you can see you can kind of imagine you can just put your finger in there and start turning it we're going to extrude some faces out of the side make sure that uh, that goes into kind of into the place behind the steering wheel and then we're going to take some faces from the side here or some edges and we're going to start extruding those to, to make the lower part of this uh, dashboard, or not the dashboard, but to make the lower part with underneath the steering wheel, right? That is like a leather surface there. We're going to start extruding those, moving them in place, make sure everything kind of connects smoothly. Uh, the part kind of fits in the gap between the two uh, leather uh, surfaces. Now we have the, the rough frame for this, and now we can just continue extruding this down a little bit. We're going to adjust some vertices so we can start to, so we can connect it to the other side. And now we have a nice little hole here for this steering wheel. You can kind of adjust the steering wheel so there's some space below. I'm going to bevel that. I'm just also kind of improvising. I don't know what the shape exactly looks like. I kind of did it my own way. I'm going to duplicate that to the other side, connect them. And now we're going to add some loop cuts here and bevel them so we can extrude one part so it looks like there's like a leather stitch there, right? There's like, a, there's like two lips kind of. And in between them, there's like stitches. So it kind of looks like that. It's pretty cool. I'm going to move some of these faces forward to make this uh, round kind of extruded part. And this is a, there's another button here. So you'll see that in a second. We're going to extrude some faces here so we can make another circular button there. Okay. We extrude those two faces and we turn them into a hexagon to make sure that aligns correctly. And then we, uh, we can kind of extrude that out. And that's going to be the base of another button here. So we extrude that inwards again. Now we have a hole for another button. 
and then we make another we, we make another circle and we use that to kind of shape out the next the next uh, button same thing we did before all right do some extrusion do some scaling nothing no rocket science there lead some faces use some loop cuts to make it to, to make it a little bit sharper extrude the button itself same thing we did with the buttons before you know we have a cylinder there now we're gonna uh, take all these faces extrude them as individual faces and then scale them down a little bit we have to uh, only scale down the edges uh, on the ends so that uh, we keep the length but we narrow down the width of these little ridges for the grip Again, edge split, uh, sharp uh, edges to make the, the smooth shading go away on the sharp parts. And again, we just extrude some of the parts here to make this little beveled. We extrude it and we bevel the edges or we bevel the edge loops to make this little round kind of bevel around the top of the button. I don't know how else I would describe that. And there we go. That button's ready. Now we're going to use some of these edges below here to shape this little. It's almost like a glove box, but it's not really a glove box. I don't know what's down there. Basically, just another leather surface, right? Again, I'm kind of improvising my way through to make this all connect reasonably well trying not to make the topology too messy and we shape that and we just fit fit the edges make sure everything is kind of smooth and connects properly and then we just keep extruding these uh the, this surface on the other side and over here we're gonna add some more details later so we add this uh this loop cut and we bevel that so we can extrude and inset these faces and extrude them inwards because so, this is where we're gonna add some more buttons there's gonna be another little console there add some loop cuts adjust it make it sharper over there so we have this little hole there and that's where we're going to start with later. So we're going to use a circle with a mirror modifier. This is going to be some more buttons down here. I don't know, this little radio control or something. And then it's just some hard surface modeling. Extrude these two holes for the buttons. And then we add a subdivision surface modifier again. Bevel some of the edges to make them sharper. Add some loop cuts and stuff. Add some mean creases. And now we have another hole for the buttons there. And then uh, we're going to extrude that backwards. Add some thickness. Fit that into place. And uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to extrude the faces in the middle again and use that to kind of shape out the buttons. I don't even want to show you how, how I did this. I don't recommend use my technique. I have no, I have no idea why this worked. It was a horrible way to do it, but hey, it worked. So yeah, this is, you, just, you can just kind of see how messy uh, the topology is on these buttons. I don't even want to talk about this. I'm kind of ashamed of, <laughs> of, of the, the outcome here, but hey, it worked. So I'm beveling the edges to make them sharper again. Look at this topology. You can see it's completely atrocious. So yeah, don't listen to everything I say, but hey, it worked. And then we just kind of uh, copy some of the buttons the other side once we have one side. Again, we're using a cube with subdivision surface uh, to make this little separating piece. Okay, and that looks kind of nice and round and smooth. So we put that there and we just use some loop cuts to make it a, a harder shape. And then we duplicate all the buttons. We parent everything in place and we're good, uh, good to go. So we just kind of keep extruding. the. We, we copy one of the buttons and place it there. It, we did the same thing we did before with the buttons previously. We bring these buttons here and we just put them into place and parent everything and we're good to go, right? And parent that to the rest of the surface and this is pretty much done all right now next we're going to make another shape like we just did on the other side of the steering wheel with those two buttons all right so we have to make a little bit of a we have to kind of model out the shape that we're going to extrude out this is going to be the this is still leather so this is still has to smoothly connect to the rest i'm going to add some bevels some loop cuts here and again we're going to make like little lips with the stitches here so uh let's do that let's extrude that inwards a little bit all right just to make that kind of uh, gap there to make that ridge there we adjust the shape of that so it kind of fits the, the same shape as we have on the other side and we delete that and this is where we're going to start which is where we're going to fit that carbon fiber shape with those two buttons all right so we're going to use this again we're going to make a circle the same way we did on the other side just basically the same technique shoot a circle shoot another circle connect the two circles make a, some holes for the buttons that's all we did there subdivision surface modifier make some holes extrude them inwards place new buttons there that's the same thing so i'm not going to show you again how i made these buttons i'm just and place the same buttons there and we're good to go and we also copy this button here and copy it to the other side and now we're just extruding it to connect to connect it to the steering wheel again again we're extruding some faces here there's going to be some more buttons here so we're going to extrude these faces inwards to make the a hole there for the buttons use some loop cuts to tighten the edges bring in some more buttons that's it and we're going to use a plane here to uh, extrude out there's like a little screen between the upper and the, uh, the upper and the lower leather surfaces we're going to just place a plane there for now and now we're going to use another plane on the other side we copied some edges to extrude out the other part this is like where the this might actually be the glove box this time this is actually the passenger seat on the leather surface not rocket science we're just extruding some stuff backwards to give it some thickness to give it some smoothness right and uh yeah basically just using loop cuts to tighten all this stuff fitting it all together we're going to move this a little bit further out because we need some more space there so we, we just kind of extrude everything or move everything to the side and now we're just going to copy this again and extrude the last part below the last fan. Same thing again, using a 3D cursor to rotate some of these edges. So it's kind of like a round 
around the corner over there, round and smooth corner. We gotta adjust some of the loop cuts there to make it fit correctly. You can see there, we're just kind of scaling stuff up and putting it into place using loop cuts to make this tighter, make it fit better. Nothing interesting to see here, just basic tools and stuff like that. Now, I decided to delete everything on top here because I'm gonna have to do it again because it didn't work out. The topology was atrocious the first time. So you can see me make a second attempt here. I can't really describe everything I'm doing here. It's just like just me kind of trying to find something that works, trying to work out a, some some kind of topology, which is not going to be completely horrible. So I'm just extruding the edge again around the AC. Oh, I'm the two AC fans in the middle. So uh, yeah, you can see me trying to kind of fit everything, extrude it backwards, make that inner edge, and uh, add some loop cuts to make it sharper. Now we're going to extrude. We're going to lift this up a little so we can see it better. Now we're extruded the part to the other side. Do the same thing, just try to kind of extrude this shape and try to kind of finish the frame somewhere, you know, try to kind of fit it all around the, the AC fans. And then we extrude, uh, we do some more loop cuts to make it sharper and we extrude this to the right so we can uh, continue with uh, the rest of the leather surface. But maybe we're uh, kind of gonna rotate this this uh, edge loop here so it has a bit of an angle and we're gonna scale it up so it's, it's a bit like rounded. And then, uh, yeah, another loop cut, we're gonna push that down to make it like a little bump on the surface of that leather. I'm gonna push that further out. We're gonna extrude the screen that we made with that plane in the middle, and we're gonna add a subdivision surface modifier to that to make it fit uh, the, the leather surfaces. Now you can see that I deleted the fan on the right side. Uh, as I said before, many of these things you just have to try like five times because it, it's completely atrocious. It's hard to figure out. Try five times, eventually something works and it ends up looking pretty good. So uh, there we have that. Again, we're just extruding the hole for. The other button for the AC, we're gonna copy that there. Nothing new there, the same stuff that we did before. And we're gonna make that, uh, make, make adjust the hole so it fits around around this little button. It's not a button, it's like a little adjustment for the AC. I don't know what you would call that. And as you can see, I left a gap in this leather surface above the AC uh, uh, fans. So this is because I'm gonna use a separate object or separate shape, separate, it's the same mesh, it's the same object, but a separate, you know, a separate shape, separate, the vertices are not connected. We're going to use a separate uh, uh, separate object to kind of co make this cover above the AC fans. So it's subdivision surface. So again, we just kind of extrude it so it connects smoothly with the other uh, with the other leather surface. We're going to use a 3D cursor to make sure that vertices are exactly in the same place, so we have the even gaps. Use some loop cuts to tighten the edges again, the same way we did before. Just this time, hopefully, it's going to work out a little bit better, and it did. So we parent that to the rest of the leather surface, and we're good to go. Now over here, we're going to rotate this so we can get an angle on these edges. And then we're going to inset some of these faces and extrude them out a little bit because we're going to make these little shapes uh, in the leather. And then we're going to add some loop cuts there. We're going to move some of the vertices around to make the edges here rounder to make this shape a little bit more round and smooth. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side here. So we have two of these shapes. Extrude that out a little. Move some of the edges and vertices to make the top a little bit more round. And now we have a nice, this nice shape in the leather. And we're going to use this cube down here underneath the radio to extrude out this kind of central panel for with these three buttons. Probably like, I don't know race mode or I don't know something AC some buttons I don't know I think the start button the power button might be so or like the, the handbrake or something anyway we're using a cube with a subdivision surface modifier we uh, inset a hole in the back so we make this little kind of this is all carbon fiber I don't know uh, what materials they're used here we we're making some buttons here we just copied buttons from before and then we're extruding uh, adding some loop cuts so that we can extrude these faces here and then we can turn those into a hexagon and make a circle, so it's like a circular hole for this button. You can see what I'm doing over here. Extrude that inwards a little bit, make a hole for the next button. And once we get the right shape there, adjust that a little bit, I'm gonna delete all the others around it and I'm just gonna copy this little section so that uh, I can fit it around all the other buttons. All right, so I'm just copying the base of the button and moving it uh, below and then moving it above again, as you can see here, connecting those two. And now I just kind of duplicated the hole three times. I extrude the edges out to make them all connect nicely to have it make them sure that their edges Nice and smooth, and we connect everything to the first piece. Move this down a little bit. Move some of the vertices down to make it uh, just give it the right shape. And then we're gonna take some of these edges from the side, extrude them down, and connect everything to give it some thickness. And then we're just gonna extrude it downwards. Use the 3D cursor to just kind of fill in this hole down here. Excuse me. Move some of this to make the shape a little bit smoother below. Subdivision surface modifier. Now we're extruding this little part below here. This is where there's some kind of button you're gonna see. Uh, okay, so here, here's an interesting little. An interesting little uh, trick that I pulled off. I want to make sure I want to redo the the outline, the shape of this whole thing. All right, so I'm going to take the edges or the faces from the sides. I'm going to duplicate them and, call, and move them to the side, 
And then I'm gonna take those, it's basically just a frame, right? I'm gonna reshape them with the uh, proportional editing so that they're kind of a smooth round shape. And I just bring them back and I connect them back uh, with the old shape so uh, everything everything falls into place and we have, we have a smooth we have smooth edges on the sides of this little shape. As you can see, if I scale it up a little so I can see the differences between the width a little bit better and then I just adjust it and bring it back. Now again, we're inserting some faces using loop cuts. We're making this hole here for this button that we have, probably the, the parking brake. Loop cuts to tighten some of the edges again, some bevels maybe, and now we have this kind of, I wanna say triangular, but it's like, a, I don't know what you call the shape in mathematics, but it's almost triangular, but as for you, you know what I'm saying. Again, we extrude the interfaces uh, to get the button itself, add some loop cuts to tighten the edges, add some bevels to tighten the edges, whatever we gotta do. And now we have that nice button in there. Okay, we're gonna color that later, it's gonna look great. Once that button's finished, we paired it to the rest of the shape. I'm gonna jump back up to this hole here to reshape it a little bit better. And then we're just gonna put that into place and now we're gonna attach it, we're gonna pair it to the rest. And now we're creating this little rim down here. We just copied some vertices and it kind of extruded them outwards to make sure this, we have, so we have this little connecting piece that connects this kind of handle to the rest of this little surface down here. There's some more buttons there and stuff like that. So we extrude a little surface around it to make this little hole down here in this little central console panel, whatever you wanna call it. Loop cuts to tighten the edges, we extrude this shape in the back, push some of the edges backwards, so we have this round little shape. And now we have to kind of use the vertices to shape out this, uh, this uh, one piece, the central piece of this console thing. We're gonna push some of these faces down and then uh, we're gonna push some of these edges in the front backwards to make a round shape. And then uh, we're gonna kind of uh, extrude these down to give it some thickness and then uh, we're insetting a face here to make it a nice little smooth edge there so we can add some more shapes there later and connect it back with the with the leather part in the top, whatever. As you can see, we make it, we, we extrude that inwards a little bit so we have a nice smooth edge around this nice smooth uh, kind of separation between the two shapes. We're gonna add a cube here and we're gonna shape that uh, as this little button. It's probably something for the windows or something like that. We're gonna extrude that cube. We have a mirror modifier on this. We're gonna inset that inwards. And then we're gonna move some of the vertices around to get this little, uh, the right shape for this uh, button. As you can see, the back part is thinner than the, than the front part. We delete the face here, we extrude the edge inwards. So this is just like the frame of the button, let's say. Subdivision surface modifier and add some loop cuts to tighten the edges. So we have to make, make sure the front is a little bit thicker. Then we add a loop cut to tighten the edges and add some bevels there to make these edges a little bit sharper and everything. And then uh, we're gonna separate the two buttons a little bit. Now we're gonna add another cube and this is going to be the separator between the two buttons. So we're gonna add this cube, extrude it a little bit, add a subdivision surface modifier to that. Once we get the rough shape, then we're gonna add a subdivision surface modifier and add some loop cuts to make it a little bit sharper and tighter. And that's the night that be separating the two buttons. And then after we finish this shape, we're going to move on to just finishing the button itself, right? So we're gonna copy the frame, fill that in, extrude it. We have to make sure it's filled correctly so the topology is right. So we just added some loop cuts there to make sure everything connects correctly. And then uh, we just extrude that downwards, add some thickness, and then we add some more uh, loop cuts and stuff like that to make the edges a little bit sharper, and that's it. And then we have to extrude this little bit here to make it fit around the separating piece between the two buttons, All right? Loop cuts and extruding top view, you can see I have to kind of fix up this little separating piece to make it round and make it perfectly fit so it looks pretty cool uh, when you look at it uh, from a further away. It looks like a nice smooth little detail. Button's finished, we're good to go. We're gonna adjust some of these other parts around this little central panel, move them around to make it a little bit more round. And then we're going to uh, extrude this part in the front and push some of the edges forward to make it more like a circle. If you look at it from the top, it's going to be more like a semicircle, kind of extrude outwards, as you can see here, it's a little bit more round. And we're gonna add a plane and we're gonna use that to shape the two pieces around these three buttons that kind of connect back into the top. So I'm just gonna kind of use a 3D cursor, control click that kind of extrudes and snaps it to your cursor. So you're gonna see that in a second here, control click, right? It just kind of jumps to the other part. And now uh, if we, we, we roughly shape this in low poly, we make it thinner at the top, we roughly shape it out, we have only a few polygons here. And then we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier after we roughly shape it and then we can, uh, we can work with these few vertices that we have, it's easier to make the shape. We make it a little bit thicker, we add some loop cuts to tighten the edges again. And uh, we just kind of make, play around with the vertices to make it, the shape flow more smoothly. And then we kind of play around with these edges here to so everything connects uh, perfectly. There's no differences in the, in the gaps between the two shapes. You know, everything flows smoothly. Copy it to the other side with the 3D cursor. And now we're turning on a face orientation so we can see whether we have any flip normals. We do, then we fix those. And shoot this downwards a little bit more, make the shape a little bit thicker. And then uh, we're almost finished with this shape here. So we're just gonna kind of make some final adjustments, parent everything together. 
and uh, now we should be good to go so we're just going to kind of extrude uh, some faces underneath or, or make this shape the surface underneath uh, these uh, carbon fiber pieces here so this is kind of like a place where you can put your keys in there your phone in there or something it's like a little leather piece in there like a little leather surface at the bottom and now we're just going to use a cube to extrude it out and shape out this the the main kind of chunky piece that holds the whole thing together right this is what separates the driver's seat from the passenger seat this is the whole main central console i don't know what you call that thing usually there's a there's a this is the part where usually there's a the gear shifter but this is you know an automatic car it just yeah some paddle shifters doesn't have a doesn't have a stick right so we're using another plane to kind of shape out these some more carbon fiber pieces just random little details right Nothing I can really explain, just kind of see what I'm doing, you know, no, no unique tools here, just stuff that everybody knows, you just kind of have to figure out a way to use it. We also kind of extrude it in this little uh, edge, this little dent in the corner of this shape. Also, what I wanted to say about Blender when it comes to, when you look at a really, really advanced model, maybe like this one, you see, you're like, how the hell does he do it? What does he know? I don't know anything that you don't know. I know some tools, I've been doing this a long time, but it's, I don't know that many more tools than you know. I just sit down and I look at the shape, okay, how can I use the tools that I have to create this shape and then I just kind of try it like 15 times or five times ten times depending on how difficult it is until eventually I figure out a way to make it look right to make the topology right and that's basically how it is it's not rocket science you just have to figure out a way to do it there's no magical tutorial I can give you to get good at blender you just have to try the stuff you know and eventually it's gonna work right it also helps if you watch a lot of tutorials that are gonna show you a bunch of different tools now we shaped out this one little hole and we use an array modifier to kind of array it, stack it together and we just kind of manually sh use those circles to shape out the pedal. This is probably the brake, the, not the pedal, the pedal. This is probably the brake pedal, kind of making, uh, connecting these edges here so we can uh, be kind of fitting in like a puzzle as you can see. And we just get the right shape for the main pedal and then we use to make the second pedal which is a little bit thinner. Again, just two array modifiers put together. Uh, loop cuts to sharpen everything and then I use a cool trick here. I made a big circle, turned it in a curve deleted most of it except one little section and then I turn it in a curve subdivision surface and then I use a curve modifier on one of the on, on the pedals and I attach that to the curve and then as it follows the curve it kind of rounds the shape because it's deformed according to the to the circle to the curve so it makes the pedals nice and it's, they're not completely flat they're kind of rounded you know that's how the, the pedals are in a car so this is this is the right way uh, this is the way I got this nice rounded shape I scaled down the curve because I realized that the radius needs to be a little bit lower. They need to be more curved. And then I just put the pedals into place, put them side by side. And now we have a nice brake pedal, a nice gas pedal. So we're just going to place those correctly and just put them in the back. We're later connecting them. I'm not going to show you that part. It's too boring. Place them in the back. And then uh, we're going to add this other dead pedal here. So we just add a plane. And we use the same trick, just a circle, uh, like a circular little hole with a square frame, use an array modifier, extrude out the, the, the circle, make some holes there, and then we're just gonna array that and make a nice little dead pedal. That's all it is, the same way we made the pedals. And we're just going to, yeah, so we're arraying that over here. We have to use the two arrays. I think well, I just used one array here. Anyway, we put that over there, now we're making the seat. Mirror modifier, of course, we're just kind of roughly shaping out one section of the seat. It's like two, there's like separate parts of the leather, you know, they're kind of connected by, by a sewing or something. And then, uh, yeah, we're just kind of making sure we make those uh, separations correctly. It's kind of tough to explain this if it's sped up. It's a, uh, yeah, it's basically just, this is more like organic modeling. This version of the chair that you can see over here, I redid it later. I basically use the same, I did it in the same way that you can see over here, just kind of subdivision surface modifier, just kind of trying to get the right shape. Second time it turned out a little bit better. I did the same thing. It just happened to be a little bit cooler. So I just left that chair in there. And uh, as you can see, I'm extruding one section of the one, uh, a couple of loop cuts here inward so I can add some more uh, stitches. Here I'm using the same thing that I use on top of the, the, the leather surface in the beginning. And I'm making this little kind of connecting bridge, this little, I don't know what you call that part. And we're making more stitches here with the, with the curve modifier and the ray modifier. We're making more of these uh, stitches and we're placing them correctly. And, and then uh, we just move the chair inwards and so it's in the right place. Video froze. It's you know the last part, and then we get back here to modeling uh, this this shape next to the chair. This is kind of what holds the chair in place. Using a cube to shape it out, subdivision surface modifier to make it smoother or rounder. Moving around some loop cuts and stuff. We kind of take a we move the, some of the loop cuts up and down to make sure it's a nice curvy surface. We take some faces in the front. We extrude them out to make this metal shape, metal part of this. 
I had a little circle extruded out into a little cylinder. And this is like one little detail. I don't know what it is. We make a little hole there and extrude some faces or inset some faces and extrude them inwards and make a little hole. Another little detail. I don't know what it is. I just see it in the picture. I try to mimic it. It works out. Maybe it doesn't. Try it again. Eventually it works out. There it is. So make a little hole here. I don't know what I was doing over here. You can see the topology is quite interesting. The topology actually works, but it just looks ridiculous. Now I'm over here making the pedals, the, the pedals shifters behind the steering wheel, right? So I just use a plane to kind of shape out the general shape. So I just extrude some of the sides, extrude it upwards, extrude it upwards and then downwards. Then I add some thickness to it, adjust some of the edges to get the right shape, to make it nice and round, to make it look like what I think the, the shifter looks like. I didn't get a separate uh, reference image for this one because I thought it's not that visible. I'll just kind of get as, the shape as much as I can. And then, uh, yeah, some more loop cuts to, to tighten some of the edges here and subdivision surface, smooth shading, all that stuff. And then I just uh, kind of bring it to the right angle and just uh, use a 3D cursor to snap it into place behind the steering wheel, duplicate it to the other side, and we're good to go. So after about 45 minutes of talking about modeling, I think it's about time we start talking a little bit about texturing, a little bit about rendering. So let's just quickly cover that. Now, the first thing we did was applying a carbon fiber texture to the steering wheel. Now I have a separate video tutorial for how to make a carbon fiber texture. So go check that out. You will find it on my channel. We just did the same thing over here, just with a normal map and clear code, just make it shiny. And that was pretty much it. And then we applied that same material to some other parts of the steering wheel. Now for the leather on the sides, I just add a base color and then I use a normal map, a leather normal map, and I just apply that and pretty much you're good to go as leather. Now I made this plane here with a bunch of uh, subdivisions and I extruded some holes in it. I baked it as a normal map. You can also see in my carbon fiber texturing tutorial how to make a normal, how to bake a normal map. And we baked that, uh, those holes and we combined that normal map with the leather normal map to make a kind of uh, combined leather with holes normal map. Okay, you will see that's a little, little part of the sides of the steering wheel. So then I opened up paint net and I started producing some of the textures that I would need for the buttons. For example, the turning signals, I just opened up, I just made a black surface and made a white arrow and I put that on the button for the turning signal. I just UV mapped that correctly and there we go. Then I used the same uh, program to just write out a start button and I made this other button, I don't know what it does. I made those two buttons in PaintNet and then I just used some UV unwrapping or UV mapping to place that texture on the button and to map it correctly. And then it pretty much is good to go. It's a very simple thing to do. Over here, we're applying the second button and then we need to put some more materials in this little rim. Now, the logo was the best part. Same thing. I took a logo and I just UV mapped the middle part. This was probably the sweetest part of the texturing process. And then since I realized that this uh, button drawing manual button drawing method works pretty well. I spent the next hour or two just manually drawing up random buttons and icons from around the interface of the car in PaintNet. And here in the corner, you can see the final image is just a, a bunch of random icons scattered across a black surface. And then I did the same thing afterwards that I did with the first two buttons. I just UV mapped those manually, uh, or I just UV mapped those onto all of the buttons. So first I assigned a generic green material to all the buttons, just so I know these are the buttons that need to have the icon texture on it then instead of that material i loaded the black uh, image with the icons and then i just mapped each surface uh, onto the appropriate icon and that's pretty much how i got all the buttons down so i did that one by one button this took to me forever to do but it actually turned out pretty well i did a similar thing with this ac screen in the middle i just placed that there in, uh, in this little screen under the ac i'm gonna stop now because i can see that this video is almost an hour long now so i'm just gonna cut it here if you guys want to see the rest, I know you're going to let me know in the comments first thing. So I'll just make another couple of videos like this. Maybe I'll show you how I textured it, how I rendered it, all that stuff. So just let me know if you like this. If it gets good responses, I'll keep doing this stuff. Again, guys, all of this stuff, I know it was very, very fast talking. I was kind of like an auction guy. But, uh, you know, the guy that speaks on an auction and is, uh, speaks super fast and it's ridiculous. But if you want to slow it down. I wrote a book, guys. Seriously, everything that I know, it's in that book. All the techniques, plus more, it's there in written form. If you really want to learn Blender, check it out. It's going to help me out a lot as well. I put the link in the description. Go check that out. But thank you for watching, guys. As I said, leave a comment if you want to know something from this video. You want me to explain something in some more detail. It's a really good question. I'll actually make another video as much as I can for good stuff. Of course, I want content ideas, guys. If you have a really good idea, drop it down. I'll try to make some more quick video tutorials to address those questions. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one.